we were discussing the structure of the real number system and in the last class we listed various properties of the real numbers and let me recall that I mentioned that one of the most important property of the real numbers is what we had called the order completeness property or also known as LUB action. So, let me state that uh, once again what it simply says is that every non empty subset subset of R that is bounded above that is bounded above has list upper bound okay. and we have already seen that once we say that it has a least upper bound then that least upper bound has to be unique okay. and uh, by uh, the similar argument we have we can also see that if this is accepted then we can in a similar way using this we can also prove that if a set is non empty and bounded below then it has a greatest lower bound or what we call infimum. Okay. Also, uh, the way in which this LUB or supremum comes into picture in various proofs is as follows that is suppose you say that A is non empty and suppose alpha is the LUB of A okay. Then what we have seen in the other class is that for every epsilon bigger than 0 the alpha minus epsilon is not an upper bound. So, you can always find the element in A which is bigger than alpha minus epsilon. So, for every epsilon there exists x in A, this x may depend on epsilon okay, this x for different epsilon you may need to choose different x okay. So, if you want you can write x suffix epsilon which is what some books do, but not very important right now. So, there exists x in epsilon such that alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than x, this means that alpha minus epsilon is not a lower bound and alpha itself is a uh, sorry alpha minus epsilon is not an upper bound and alpha itself is an upper bound. So, x less than or equal to alpha okay. this will be always true okay. and this one particular axiom is the one of the is the most important axiom of the real number system which distinguishes real numbers from all other number systems okay. And we have seen also in the last class that uh, any uh, with this axiom the real number system becomes a what is called a complete ordered field and there is only one complete ordered field which has all these properties okay. Uh, also the way in which the this axiom comes into picture in the various well known theorems in their analysis let me again remind you in the last class perhaps I had mentioned this article by Professor S. Kumarasan role of LUB axiom in their analysis. in analysis okay. We shall see some instances of this. In fact, uh, what you will notice and that is what we want to emphasize is that most of the important properties of the real line either follow directly from this axiom or in some chain of logic that is you, you prove some theorem using this axiom then something else using that theorem etcetera and at the last stage you prove whatever what that particular property. So, every major property of the real numbers depends either directly or indirect, indirectly on this particular property okay. Let us see few instances of that uh, to begin with for example, we can show this that the set of all natural numbers n is not bounded above, is not bounded above. there is no real number which is bigger than or equal to all all natural numbers okay. So, how does we do that okay. When suppose n is bounded above we shall see what happens okay we will get a contradiction okay. suppose n is bounded above
Okay, by the way, instead of bounded above, if we had talked about bounded below, is that true? It is bounded below, okay, that part is trivial. Okay. So, this is only important. Okay. N is bound, suppose N is bounded above, then what should happen in view of this? N is already non empty, we know several natural numbers. Okay. So, it should have a least upper bound. Okay. It should have a least upper bound. Okay. So, suppose N is bounded above, then N has least upper bound say alpha, suppose I call that least upper bound alpha. Okay. Then use this, okay. we know that for every epsilon there should exist some uh, x in a such that alpha minus epsilon less, I will take this epsilon as 1, I okay. will take this epsilon as 1. Okay. So, suppose I take this epsilon as 1, I can say there exists x in n such that um, alpha minus 1 is strictly less than x okay, and this is less than or equal to alpha. Okay. Right. okay. Now take this part. Okay. If alpha minus one less than x, okay. From this, can we say that alpha less than x plus one? Right. Alpha less than x plus one. Okay. In fact, since this is a natural number, let us use a different notation so that it will understand what is happening. Instead of x, I will say small n, okay, small n belonging to n such that alpha minus 1 less than n. So, this proves that alpha less than n plus 1. Okay. But what is n plus 1? n plus 1 is a natural number because n is a natural number and alpha is less than n plus 1. So, that contradicts that alpha is an upper bound. right? Okay. So, so that is not possible. So, n is not bounded above. Okay. All right. Then similarly, there is another very well known uh, property of real numbers which depends on or which relates natural numbers and real numbers. It is called Archimedean property. Of R. Archimedean, this name may have come from this Greek mathematician Archimedes, but apparently he was not the one who discovered this. Anyway, we will not go into those historical points. If you, those of you who have interest, can look at the book. Okay. What this property says is the following: Suppose you take two positive real numbers. Okay. So, suppose uh, suppose x, y in R uh, are such that Okay, uh, 0 less than x and 0 less than y. Okay. You take two positive real numbers, then you can always find a natural number such that n times x is bigger than y. Okay. That is, given any two real positive real numbers, you can take any of those positive numbers and multiply that by a suitable natural number so that that multiple becomes bigger than the other real numbers. Okay. That is called Archimedean property. Then, of course, that number n may depend on both x and y. Okay, that number n. So then, there exists a natural number n such that n times x is bigger than y. Can you see that this follows immediately from this? See, suppose this is false. Okay, suppose this is false. Then what does that mean? N s. That means n x less than or equal to y. X is bigger than zero. Okay, so does it mean that n less than or equal to y by x? Right. See, if if this is false, that is, if not, n less than or equal to y by x for every n in n.
that is clear okay so if if there is no such n it means that for every n n must be less than or equal to y by x okay but can that happen because that will mean that again that will mean that n is bounded above okay right so that's not possible okay, okay. all right now many of you would have seen this so proof of this famous thing that root 2 is irrational okay right okay and how does the proof go okay suppose it is rational then you say that uh, root 2 is m by n okay and then you remove the common factors from m and n then you will write that 2 is equal to m square by n square so that will give 2 n square is equal to m square etc and then since we already so this will be in the 2 divides so uh, m square that will give that 2 divides m so removing 2 again you will get that uh, uh, for that that will show that m is even and similarly it will prove that n is also even by after you remove 2 okay so fine that proof is quite well known to you okay right but does this say that there exists a root 2 as a real number how do you know that there exists a real number see all that this proves is that there is no rational number all that this proves is there is no rational number whose square is 2 right that is what this proves okay does it prove that there exists a real number whose square is 2 it doesn't right it doesn't okay that so that needs a proof separately okay that there exists a real number which in fact without that even this notation root 2 is meaningless without proving that there exist a real number whose square is 2 even this notation root 2 is meaningless okay and to prove that you will need this okay to prove that you will need this well let us see let us see how that can be done okay so let us just take that as a theorem and then we shall subsequently see that there is nothing very particular about 2 okay but let us prove it for 2 since this is a familiar proof let us say okay i will say there exists x in fact one can say something more uh there exists x unique x bigger than 0 this is unique x bigger than 0 such that x square is equal to 2 of course i can say it's unique because of this okay right suppose i remove that condition then that is not unique right okay. because Minus x square is same as x square. Okay, so as far as the uniqueness is concerned, there is nothing much to prove. Okay, okay, <coughs> right. See, suppose there are two x and y which satisfy both. Okay, you will get x square is equal to y square. Okay, and that will give that x minus y into x plus y is zero. Right. Okay. see uh, suppose let us let's write okay suppose there exist x y in r such that x square is equal to 2 and y square is also 2 okay then this will give that x minus y into x plus y is equal to 0 okay of course this is important suppose there exists xy in r such that x square equal to 2 and y square equal to 2 and both are positive okay right now if if that is the case x plus y is also positive okay and so you can multiply both sides by 1 by x plus y and you'll get x equal to y okay right so If we don't assume that x is bigger than equal to zero, then x plus y also can be zero, and that will give y equal to minus x. Okay, but if x and y both are positive, x and y must be equal. Okay, all right. Okay. Mm. Now let us go to the existence. Okay. Um, let us say I will take the set A as the set of all x which are bigger than zero and x square less than or equal to two. x square less than or equal to 2 okay 
is this a non empty set right obviously one belongs to a, that is clear right one less than one square is less than root so one belongs to a so that is non empty is that bounded above okay how do you prove it is bounded above yes no okay how do you show that the root rule Oh, two is an upper bound. Fine. Okay. How how does one prove that? That that will only show that two doesn't belong to A. How does it show two is an upper bound? What what you say is right. Two square is four, and that is not less than or equal to two. But that only means that two does not belong to A. Right? How does it show that two is an upper bound? to show that something is an upper bound what is needed to show you have to show that if you take any element in x then that must be less than or equal to 2 right and how do you show that hmm. okay let us let us do okay let x belong to a okay let x belong to a okay then then what we know that then these two things we know x is bigger than 0 and x square is less than or equal to 2 okay we want to prove that x is less than or equal to 2 right if we want to say 2 is an upper bound okay we want to we want to prove that okay all right now tell me how does one proceed after this We have not showed any such thing that taking square roots, okay, preserves the order, okay. Just use whatever we have said so far about real numbers, okay. All right, let us let me just give a hint. Once you realize that, that will be clear, okay. See, suppose x is less than or equal to 1, okay. If x is less than or equal to 1, then 1 is less than 2, so there is nothing to be proved, okay, okay. So, then obviously x is less than or equal to 2, okay. okay. If not, one strictly less than x, right. If not, one is strictly less than x, okay. All right. If one is strictly less than x, can you say that that, that will give x is less than x square? remember x is bigger than 0 okay okay remember x is bigger than 0 okay right if if 1 is less than x or even less than or equal to this will give that x is x is less than or equal to x square okay and x we already assume that x square is less than or equal to 2 okay okay So that shows that A is bounded above, okay. A is bounded above, okay. right. And so now use this axiom, LUB axiom. Since A is bounded above, okay, uh, it has a least upper bound, okay. Let us call that least upper bound as alpha. Okay. Let, let alpha be an LUB of T. Obviously, alpha is a real number, okay. We, right? we have said that every non empty set that is bounded above has a least upper bound. This least upper bound is a real number. So, alpha is a real number, okay. okay. And what we want to say about this alpha? That alpha is or alpha square is equal to 2, okay. This is what we want to say, okay. So,
alpha square is equal to 2. Alright. Now, um, okay. We use this property of this least upper bound. We have said that if alpha is a least upper bound of anything, then if you take any epsilon, okay, then alpha minus there should exist some x in a such that alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than x. Okay. Um, we shall choose the appropriate epsilon little later, but let us start with any epsilon. Okay. So let epsilon be bigger than 0, then there exists x in A such that uh, alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than x and of course this is less than or equal to alpha. Okay. All right. And we shall choose this uh, alpha minus uh, we should choose this epsilon in such a way that this alpha minus epsilon is also positive okay let okay that we can always do right that we can always do that is because uh, suddenly alpha is an upper bound so alpha is bigger than or equal to any element here okay alpha is bigger than or equal to any element here so in particular alpha is bigger than 1 also okay alpha is bigger than 1 also so for, for example if i can choose epsilon as half alpha minus epsilon will be strictly positive okay so let we let me say here let epsilon be bigger than 0 such that alpha minus epsilon is also bigger than 0 right this we can do always right okay so this is 0 less than alpha minus epsilon less than x okay right and since alpha minus epsilon is less than x now we can say that we will multiply this by alpha minus epsilon this by x then this inequality will remain unchanged okay because both are positive numbers now okay so what we'll get is uh, alpha minus epsilon whole square is less than x square and less than or equal to this alpha square okay so suppose we expand this what we'll get is alpha square minus 2 alpha epsilon plus epsilon square is less than or equal to alpha square Okay. Right? Okay. Yes? Strict inequality. Huh. That is strict. Strict inequality. Okay. So what follows from this? Okay, of course I want this also. Um let me forget about this part okay this is strictly less than x square and since x square is in a we can say that x square is less than or equal to 2 okay x square is in a we'll say that x square and that is what we want to use okay x square is less than or equal to 2 okay okay now does it follow from here that alpha square is less than or equal to 2 Remember, this is true for every epsilon. Okay, this is true for every epsilon. Okay, right. So I can make further choice of epsilon such that this number becomes so. Uh, this number becomes strictly positive. Okay, see, this is something I have mentioned right in the beginning. That is, suppose you want to show that something is suppose you want to show x is less than or equal to y. You can show that x is less than y plus epsilon for every epsilon. Okay or which is same as saying that x minus epsilon less than or equal to y or x minus epsilon less than y for every epsilon this is what we have shown here okay whatever epsilon you take okay whatever epsilon you take this is always going to be less than or equal to 2 okay right for every epsilon that is important okay this is true for since the, so so the argument is since this happens for every epsilon we must have alpha square less than or equal to 2 okay we must have alpha square less than or equal to 2 okay? we can say that so since this holds for every epsilon bigger than 0 we have alpha square is less than or equal to 2 is that clear alpha square is less than or equal to 2 okay 
yeah, one more thing we should notice right here. Since alpha is an upper bound of A, alpha is bigger than or equal to every element in A, okay, and every element in A is bigger than 0, okay. So, in particular, alpha is bigger than 0. In fact, we have also noticed that alpha is bigger than or equal to 1 actually. So, so alpha is strictly bigger than 0. Now, we have proved that alpha square is less than or equal to 2, okay, right. But what we wanted to prove? We want to prove that alpha square is equal to 2, okay. So, that means what we what we need to prove next? Yeah, that is alpha that is alpha square is also bigger than or equal to 2, okay. Suppose we prove that alpha square is also bigger than or equal to 2, then it will mean that alpha square equal to or which is or other way to saying is that we can we should show that this inequality cannot be strict okay that is that is uh, we have already shown that alpha square is less than or equal to 2 now suppose alpha square is strictly less than 2 okay alpha square is strictly less than 2 okay we have to show that this cannot happen okay our idea is to show that this cannot happen alpha square is strictly less than 2 then we will do something similar again here we have taken alpha minus epsilon we will now consider alpha plus epsilon okay we will choose an epsilon in appropriate way and get some contradiction okay so so let us say consider uh, consider epsilon bigger than 0 and then of course alpha plus epsilon is also bigger than 0 okay and then see our idea is basically this if alpha square is less than 2 okay we want we will find some epsilon such that alpha plus epsilon whole square is also less than 2 is that possible in fact, that is what we shall verify. Okay, those are the calculations that we shall verify. Okay, so consider some epsilon bigger than zero, and alpha plus epsilon is also bigger than two. Then alpha plus epsilon whole square. This is equal to alpha square plus two alpha epsilon plus epsilon square. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. alpha square is less than 2 okay alpha square is less than 2 okay so which is same as saying that this if i take, take this number 2 minus alpha square that's a positive number okay 2 minus alpha square that's a positive number okay now the question is suppose i choose an epsilon in such a way that this part 2 alpha epsilon plus epsilon square okay suppose this is less than this okay suppose this is less than this okay then what will the meaning what will be the meaning of this then that whole thing will be less than 2 right okay so let me just say that thing here first okay choose epsilon bigger than 0 such that 2 alpha epsilon plus epsilon square is less than 2 minus alpha square how this is to be done or whether this can be done or not etc that we shall see little later okay but suppose this can be done okay suppose this can be done okay then what does that mean it will mean that then alpha plus epsilon whole square this is that is equal to uh, that is less than alpha square plus 2 minus alpha square and that is less than 2 okay that is less than 2 okay and it means that for this epsilon what what does that mean that alpha plus epsilon is bigger than 0 and its square is less than 2 that means this means alpha plus epsilon belongs to a okay and this means alpha plus epsilon belongs to a now with epsilon strictly bigger than 0 right now can that happen Right, alpha is an upper bound of a. Alpha is an upper bound of a. So no number bigger than alpha can belong to a. So this is a contradiction. Okay. This is a contradiction.
thing. So now only thing remains is that whether we can choose such an epsilon, okay? Right? Whether we can choose such an epsilon, okay? Now for, for this to happen, what what must be the case? Okay. Anyway, see if we choose any particular epsilon, okay, and suppose uh, this inequality, that is what we what we need is this inequality, right? If that inequality works for any particular epsilon, it will also work for any other epsilon smaller than that. That is clear, okay. Suppose I, let us say if it works for epsilon equal to half, okay. it will also work for epsilon equal to one by four, one by eight, or anything, okay. So I can, so it is because of this that I can assume right from the beginning that epsilon is less than one, okay. I can assume right right in the beginning that I can choose epsilon smaller than one, okay. So I can say that we 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 may choose zero less than epsilon less than one. Okay. Then, huh, the point to choose the point of choosing this epsilon is less than one is that this will also imply that epsilon square is less than epsilon. If epsilon is less than one, then epsilon square is less than epsilon. Okay. Then now the choice becomes very easy. That is the whole idea here. Okay, then two alpha epsilon, sorry, two alpha epsilon plus epsilon square. This is less than. It will be less than two alpha epsilon plus epsilon, right? Which is nothing but epsilon into two alpha plus one. Okay, epsilon into two alpha plus one. Okay. Now, can we can we choose epsilon is such that this is less than two minus alpha square? Okay, two alpha plus one is a positive number. Okay, so epsilon into two alpha plus one less than two minus alpha square is this is same as saying that epsilon should be less than two minus alpha square divided by two alpha plus one. Right? Okay, that is. And of course, epsilon. Now, two minus alpha square divided by two alpha plus one. This is a positive number, right? Can we always choose some positive number, bit some positive number which is strictly less than that? Okay. We can always do that. Okay. And and also it we uh, we we also wanted it is also it should also be smaller than one. Okay. So we can say that choose epsilon which is smaller than minimum of these two. Take one. And two minus alpha square divided by two alpha plus one. These are two positive numbers. Okay, their minimum is also a positive number. For example, you can choose epsilon to be half of that minimum. Okay, then it will be less than one as well as less than this. Okay, right? This is the kind of technique that you use in many proofs. Okay, that is why I have done this in detail here. Okay. Okay. Is this clear? Whatever we have done. So now, what is the final conclusion? So this this shows that. Uh, Alpha square less than two. This is not possible, okay? Because we have got a contradiction to this, okay? So that means alpha square has to be equal to. Two. We already shown that alpha square is less than or equal to two, but now we have shown that it, it is not strictly less than two. So we must have alpha square is equal to two. Okay? Alpha square is equal to two. Is it clear? So what? Let us again take a look. What? What did we prove that there exists? Of course, uniqueness is trivial. There exists a unique x which is strictly that, that x is alpha, right? That alpha is bigger than zero and alpha square is two and that is unique. Okay, all those things are proved. Right? Okay. Okay. Now let me give you an exercise. Exercise is the following. Okay. There is nothing particular about this two and that two. Okay, you can take any number here instead of two. Okay, you can take any number here instead of two, and similarly, you can you can take any natural number here instead of two. Okay, right? Yeah. By the way, after after having proved this, then only this notation is meaningful. Root two, or two power half, or whatever it is. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll simply state this theorem, and proof will be left to you as an exercise. Okay. Okay. 
So, for every x in R with x bigger than, or let me instead of x, let me take it as a. For every a in R with a bigger than 0 and and a natural number n, a natural number n, uh, there exists unique x in R unique x in R with which is positive with x bigger than 0 such that x to the power n is equal to a, okay. x to the power n is equal to a. Okay. And proof left to you as an exercise, okay. do it all your own. Whatever we have done for two, you do a similar thing for n. Okay. Again, uniqueness will be straightforward to prove. You similarly define the set A with appropriate modifications here. Okay. Whatever set here we have defined, you define the set with appropriate modification. It will be a set of all x bigger than zero with x to the power n less than or equal to a. Okay. Then show that that set is non-empty, bounded above, etc take its supremum and then in a similar way show that that x to the power n is equal to a. Okay. Right. So, whatever we have done for this square, you will have to take the nth power everywhere and and come across the appropriate inequalities. Okay. Prove the appropriate inequalities. Okay. Now, let us go to one more very important property of real numbers. See, till now we have seen how natural numbers and real numbers are related to each other. Okay. Now, we look at how rational numbers and real numbers are related to each other. Okay. This important property is sometimes expressed by saying that rationals are dense in real numbers. What we want to say is that given any two real numbers, there exists a rational number between those two real numbers. Okay. So, so, given any two real numbers there exists a rational number between the two between the two means between those two real numbers So, suppose x and y are real numbers and we, we are saying the two real numbers, it means they are two different real numbers. Okay, right. So, suppose, okay, let me say a and b, suppose a and b are two real numbers and a not equal to b. So, the first step uh, I want to say that it is enough to consider the case when both a and b are positive okay. and both a and b are positive we can also assume that a is less than if, if both if they are, they are different means either a is less than b or b is less than a. So, a and b are after all notations. So, we can assume that a is less than b. Okay. So, what I want to say is that it is enough to prove it is enough to consider the case. Consider the case. Uh, let us say, let me say, zero less than a less than b. In other words, I want to say it is enough to consider the case when both are positive. Why it is enough? What are the other possible cases? One is negative and one is positive, right? One is negative and one yes. Right, 0 is there, right. So, there is nothing to prove. If both are negative, 
Can't suppose it in. See, suppose we have proved this case. Let us say q is a rational number. If a is less than q less than b, we have seen that is same as saying that minus b less than minus q less than minus a. Okay. So suppose you take two <coughs> negative numbers, you take the their negative mi minus of those two numbers, those will be positive. Find the rational between those two positive numbers. Minus of that will be rational between the two negative numbers, right? So the, it is enough to consider this case. That is clear. Okay. Now let us see how we go about this. See, after all, what is our idea? We want to find the rational numbers. That means we want to find numbers p by q. Okay. We want to find number. We want to find natural numbers p and q, or integers p and q, such that q not equal to zero and this should happen a less than p by q less than b or oh, maybe one of these inequalities may be less than or equal to also okay that doesn't matter okay right of course if a and b both are positive is it clear that p and q also must be positive okay right okay so we have to basically choose p and q in such a way that this happens okay this happens okay all right uh, to do that we have to say how to choose q and how to choose p Uh, now first consider the case. Let us consider that uh, consider the number one by b minus a and one by b. Okay. Both of these are positive numbers. Okay. You can take maximum of this. Okay. They are also positive. You can take maximum. This. There is this is also positive. Okay. Now, whatever is it positive real number? Okay. Uh, since we have already proved that the set of all natural numbers is not bounded above. Okay. I can always find a natural number which is bigger than the maximum of these two. Okay. Is that clear to you? This is a real number. Maximum of these two numbers is a real number, okay? And I can always find a natural number which is bigger than this real number, okay? So, so that number I will call Q, okay? That number I will call Q. Okay? So, you can say there exists Q in N such that this maximum is less than or equal to Q. That is one by b less than or equal to q, and one by b minus a is also less than, okay, right? One by b is less than or equal to q, and one by b minus a that is also less than or equal to q. Okay. okay this is something we want to prove. Okay. Let us just uh, record what we got here. Okay. Then, then we will have these two inequalities. Then. 1 by b less than or equal to q and 1 by b minus a this is also less than or equal to q okay okay now let me take this set okay i will again call this set as a i will take this as a set of all natural numbers m in n such that m by q is less than or equal to b okay m by q is less than or equal to b or okay that is same as saying m less than or equal to b times q okay Is this set non-empty? Right? This is an obvious number that belongs to it. What is it? One, right? One belongs to it, so it is non-empty. One belongs to A. It is obviously bounded above. Okay? Of course, this B times Q may not be a natural number, it is just a real number, but we are taking all those natural numbers which are less than or equal to this real number. Okay? Now, since this set is bounded above, can we see that there must be a maximum in this? 
it is a subset of natural numbers remember it is not subset of real numbers it is a subset of natural numbers and that is bounded above okay. So there must be maximum among this okay. So that maximum I will call P okay. So let, let P be equal to maximum of A. What, it, what does it mean that P belongs to A and since P is a maximum that means P plus 1 does not belong to A right okay. So that is and not only that uh, okay fine this is what we will require right that is the, so then P belongs to A and P plus 1 does not belong to A. We shall use both these facts okay. Okay. Now, P belongs to A means what? Of course, P is a maximum of A that means see remember A is the subset of natural numbers okay. We are choosing maximum among that. So, this is also a natural number okay. So, this is a natural number okay, okay and okay. So, what does what does P belong to A mean? P is less than or equal to BQ right. This means P is less than or equal to BQ. Remember Q is also a natural number. So, this implies P by Q less than or equal to B. Right. This is one of the things that we wanted okay. All right. We also wanted that P by Q is bigger than or equal to A. that will follow from this part okay. P plus 1 does not belong to A means what? P plus 1 must be strictly bigger than B q right, P plus 1 must be strictly bigger than B q. Okay? Right. So, this means P plus 1 strictly bigger than B q all right okay. Mm. This, this also means P by Q plus 1 by Q is bigger than B right. P by Q plus 1 by Q is bigger than B all right okay. Let me write it here. So, P by Q is bigger than B minus 1 by Q okay. All right. Now, what do we know about 1 by Q okay. It is here 1 by B is less than or equal to Q okay. So, this this means 1 by q is less than or equal to b okay. Sorry, uh, will with that this is not this is not something that is useful now okay. Uh, this part is useful now okay. 1 by b minus a is less than or equal to q okay. So, this means 1 by q is less than or equal to b minus a okay right okay. And hence what can we say about minus 1 by q? minus 1 by q is bigger than or equal to minus of b minus a right okay. So, this is bigger than or equal to b minus b minus a okay okay that is same as a right. Okay. So, here we have proved that P by Q is less than or equal to B right and here we have proved that P by Q is bigger than A, P by Q is bigger than A that is what okay. we wanted remember we wanted to show this that is A less than or equal to P by Q less than or equal to B okay and we have proved that right okay. So, we have shown that between any two real numbers there exists a rational numbers. And let me again remind you that this is what is expressed by saying that rationals are dense in reals okay. Now remember in this proof we directly use the LUB action in the proof itself right. 
in, in this proof we directly use LUB axiom in the proof itself okay. In this proof we did not use it directly okay, but did we use it indirectly? Where? Right. For example, here we said that there exists q in n such that this is less than or equal to q. Okay. There we use the fact that n is not bounded above. Okay. Right. This we can get because the set of all natural numbers is not bounded above. Okay. And that was the property that we got from LUB action. Okay. Right. So what I wanted to say again is that practically everything that you will prove about real numbers, it will follow either directly or indirectly from LUB action. Okay. And we, we shall see the instances of this in the next few lectures when we discuss the real number system. Okay, we will stop with that for now.